Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the vlog. Welcome to California. We are not the same height. I'm just doing the splits because the camera level. But if we were. Um, yeah, super smooth travel day yesterday. Um, WestJet, thanks. The and best travel day. That was a PB travel day. Yeah. So, got to, so got to uh, Toronto with the polls. Um, proceeded to have the conversation with them that they do take the polls. They're saying they don't. If you're a pole vaulter or a decathlete, you know the conversation. Yeah. And then they finally just, like, we showed them, like, where it says they do. And then they're like, okay, great. Check them in as a second bag. Got there super smooth. Saw them come off the plane, so we knew that they were here. Saw both of our bags come off the plane. Yeah, and then uh, made the drive up the coast to Santa Barbara. And now we're here. No complaints. No at complaints. All. At all. If yesterday was a sign of um, these next three weeks, it's going to be a good time. Good time. Mm -hmm. So, right off the bat, we want to thank um, the people that made this training camp happen. Because obviously, it is very expensive to be in California training for three weeks. Um, and as two unfunded amateur athletes, um, usually something like this would not be possible. But we are very fortunate to have the support of Canadian Tire Hyde Park in London. Um, yep, they are a huge supporter of ours um, and they really helped make this training camp and many other opportunities that we've had happen. So first and foremost, thank you Canadian Tire Hyde Park for um, allowing us to be here. So if you guys were wondering like what I do, like as a job, I work at Canadian Tire Hyde Park. So yeah, they've just allowed me to have like the flexibility to train and giving me some opportunities to come to training camps like this. So we are gonna make this so worth it. So. Yeah, I just woke up if you can't tell by my hair. Um, so today we just have strides, kind of like a shakeout, getting ready for uh, the next few weeks ahead. Um, so we're gonna go to the track and do that. So yeah, we're just gonna get our usual like breakfast in this morning. Um, I brought my scale to like measure out stuff. Cause I find like when we're on training camps, you tend to like eat more. Cause you just kind of sit around, so you eat more. So yeah, we brought like everything that we need to really like make this feel like home. And yeah, just like super excited to get today going, shake the legs out, maybe do some picking with Jav, just to touch it, just walk up and down. And yeah, it's gonna be a good day, so we're gonna eat breakfast, and then we will see you at the track. Um, so yeah, we're just heading out to the track now, but I wanted to show you this car that we got. This one. It's huge, it's huge. And we are here now. This is Westmount. It's really blurry. Um, yeah, kind of looks like it might rain, but I don't know. Maybe it will pass. I don't know about this weather. And yeah, so we're just gonna like start like a pretty easy warm up. Um, and then I'm gonna throw disc first after the warm up, and then I'm gonna do my strides after that. Just like. Get the legs going after and yeah there's not too much of the workout like warm up and not too much to the throwing just because we traveled yesterday so yeah just gonna keep it all easy hopefully this feels good Just finished the uh, warm up. Feels good. 
Like, body doesn't feel too, too bad. The travel isn't terrible on it. So I'm just gonna start with um, like easy throws, just probably four down, four back. And then get into the circle, do a couple stands just to feel my legs under me. And then just get into turns. I'm only doing like 12 throws, so it's gonna be a short session. And then yeah, into some strides, into med ball. And then that's it for today, so pretty simple. Okay, so Carol is just finishing up her knee physio and then we're gonna get into some med ball, so. I can't do this. All done. Day one in the books. Um, I did my strides and um, knee physio exercises while Taylor was throwing. And then he did his strides and then we just finished up with some med ball. So it was a good little recovery day. Shake out the legs after yesterday's glorious travel day. And now we're all set for tomorrow. I have um, a big jumping day tomorrow so I'm looking forward to that. First time jumping outdoors in a long time. Should be great. Um, and yeah, we're just gonna head back to the house, get some lunch in us, and just uh, chill the rest of the day. And later we're gonna go pick up Vicky. Um, she arrives today. And then the fun continues. All right, and we made it home, had our recovery shakes, protein shakes, and yeah, just about to have some lunch. But before we did that, uh, we just wanted to answer a couple questions that people had. Um, that they posted and they're good questions. So. Yeah, they are. Sorry that it's taken us a while to get to them, but um, we were busy preparing for this trip, but now we have all the time in the world. So here we go. Okay, so the first question that we're going to answer is from Rusty1973. And he said, hey guys, recently seen the auto qualifying for Tokyo and new IAAF point system. What are your thoughts on it? Fair, no different? Okay, so if you haven't quite seen it yet, in a nutshell, new standards are crazy high. Crazy, crazy high. But you have to take those numbers with a grain of salt because the intention of the IWF um, in setting these standards is that they only want half the field to actually hit this standard. So they want half of the athletes, and what I say by half the field, I mean, for example, in women's triple jump, um, 32 athletes are typically at Worlds or the Olympic Games, they'll take 32 athletes. So their goal with this standard of 1435 or something, I don't even remember what it is, it's just high, um, is that they only want 16 people to hit that. They know that it's high, but they want a smaller number of people to hit it. The other half um, will have the opportunity to qualify through the new IAAF points system. So the easiest way that I can kind of explain it is it's kind of like uh, tennis rankings so the better meets what the hell do you know about tennis rankings yeah but like the better meets that you win yeah like the grand slams if you win a bunch of grand slams like you're going to be ranked higher like if you beat people that 
are really good, you're gonna your ranks gonna go up. So that's the easiest way of describing it. Of they're going more of like a route of like ranking people, like like in tennis or something like that. So personally, I like it. Um, I am ranked higher globally using this system than just straight up single best performance um, because you get rewarded for things like winning your national championships or competing at a regional meet like NACAC or Pan Ams. Um, so it's not actually going to take 1430 to get into these meets and honestly I think it's going to take a number even lower than what the standard was before this. I think um, if you can register a few jumps just over 14 and if one of those happens to be at a meet like Pan Ams, I think that will pretty much secure your spot, um, but we'll have to see how things play out. So the the concern that a lot of people have with this is that it, it kind of becomes almost an elitist type thing. If you don't have the money to have an agent to get you into these big meets and whatnot, um, you're going to suffer because uh, other meets don't, aren't as high scoring. But I mean, I don't think it's necessarily going to go that way. Like last year I finished the season with this new ranking system ranked like 55th in the world and I wasn't at any big meets other than NACAC which still isn't really that big of a meet. It's one of those things we'll honestly just have to wait and see like it's hard to say right now what it's gonna look like but um, that's the way it is so we kind of need to accept it no matter what so I am going to put a positive spin on it. All right and the second question is directed towards myself unless they want to know. Maybe it's you, for me. Yeah. Um, the questions from the bar rule, bar roll experience. If I said that wrong, sorry. Um, his question was, what do you think the main thing to throw 14 plus meters in shot put is? Um, is it just like a big bench press or squat? Or what do I do gym wise for shot put? It's a good question. Yeah, it is a good question. I think if you're looking for like two main exercises for shot put, like if you could only choose two, um, I guess bench press and squat would be like the two main lifts because they're both compound lifts as well. Like you use kind of like your whole body. But for what we do in the gym, there's just like a lot of explosive movements and like a lot of core activation stuff and like moving the bar quick if I was doing bench press or incline or like dumbbell stuff. It's just like trying to get your arm from in this position to fully extend it as fast as you can. Cause once you start moving the shot, if you can get your arm fully extended faster than somebody else, like it's gonna go farther for the most part. Like the longer the push, the farther it's gonna go. It's just, it's science. It is actually science. Just working on your technique of being able to use your legs. So you can see everybody's in the gym. You can squat a lot more than you can bench. Just being able to like use your legs in the in the circle. It's just everybody thinks it's like oh all upper body, but I'd say 90% of it is lower body. So just trying to focus on technique of like starting slower, trying to use your legs and less arm. But yeah, other than that, um, that's the end of the vlog. So yeah. hope you guys liked our first day in California. And yeah, we're here for another three weeks. So like I said, make sure you subscribe. Don't miss anything. We're competing three or four times when we're down here. So a bunch of competition videos are coming your way. And yeah, it's other time. than that, thanks for watching. And hope you guys have a good day. And yeah, that's it. See you later. Bye.